Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.2.1 has been out for a few weeks and iOS 17.3 beta 2 was out for a few hours. Apple then withdrew the update and now it's no longer available, but there's more features to talk about. We'll also talk about the overall experience on iOS 17.2.1 so far, as well as 17.3 beta 2. I've been using it full time and we'll also talk about your experience on the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's over 16,000 votes and 260. 66 comments. Just like every week, I've compiled all of the different comments and what you had to say. So we'll take a look at some of the comments at the end of the video and also see what the experience is like for everyone. But first let's talk about a few different things that Apple has updated this week. The first thing has to do with the Apple watch. The Apple watch is still available on apple.com and in the Apple store in the United States, but we only have a few days left about 10 days or so where Apple will may have to pull them off the shelf again. We'll have to wait and see what the international trade commission's result is. As far as that goes, if Apple can update software to resolve this or something else, but at this point they're still available for sale. But if you're thinking of getting one, you may want to pick one up now as they may be a little bit more difficult to get in the next month or so, but we'll have to wait and see. If you actually use Apple wallet in the Apple savings account, if we go into that, Apple updated the savings rate to 4.35% from 4.25. After just a week or two at this point, they actually updated it again. Now it's not a huge increase, but it's something more than we got before. So if you're using that, you should see this in here as far as your notifications as well. Apple music actually was having some issues this week with library syncing where it didn't work properly between an iPhone and Mac and can give genius errors where it says the results can't be updated right now. There's actually multiple posts on Reddit, Apple support and Mac rumors about this issue altogether on Apple support forum. You'll see here's the error itself where it says loading cloud music library genius results can't be updated right now. An unknown error occurred 18,004. So that's something many people are experiencing. Hopefully they fix this maybe on the back end, or let me know if it's working for you now. Apple did push a fix to Apple music this week where there was a bug when you turned off add to playlist settings. So if you're using Apple music and within your music settings, if you had the add playlist songs or anything selected, it could deselect it for you and not work properly and change the settings for you. So when you went to add it to a playlist, it would just add to your library altogether. It was fixed over the air. Apple didn't actually acknowledge it was an issue, but they did resolve the issue. It seems. Also, one thing that recently just popped up is it seems Apple may be hit with an antitrust lawsuit from the US government this year. They've been investigated not only for things such as the App Store, of course, the European Union sort of forced them to go to USB-C. We're seeing that more and more around the world. Last week, Japan is apparently going after them over the App Store. So we'll see more of this th probably throughout the year as Apple is a huge company and they're going to see if they can open everything up. I'm not sure what I think about this yet, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, as far as new features this week with iOS 17.3 beta two, we gained stolen device protection. There's something they've actually fixed in this, or it works properly and shows that. So if we go into our device protection, so we'll go down to face ID and passcode. If we scroll down and you actually go to turn it off so you can turn off protection, give it a moment. It verifies with face ID and you have a security delay required to change stolen device protection. You can start the security delay and it now works properly. You'll see it starts a timer for an hour. That's something that wasn't working properly before and works now. So if you want to disable that, you'll have to wait. And also I noticed when I installed this update, it gave me an error. So if we go into my photos, I mentioned this in the what's new video, but when I went to install this, it said unable to install at this time. This wasn't because there was a problem, but as soon as I actually arrived at a trusted location, I was in the car, it wouldn't install. Once I arrived, it then let me install it right away. So that could be part of that protection altogether. Now there's something else that's new in this update that's either good or sometimes a problem. But if we go into our settings here, and then if we scroll down and go under general, then Apple care and warranty under Apple care and warranty, some people are seeing the icons changed where they actually match the colors of their devices. But in other cases, they're seeing different icons for things that they already have. So maybe you have an iPhone, it could show a Mac or show nothing at all. Some people are having issues with that where you'll see all of the different things I have listed here. They seem to be proper and what we have as far as the overall colors and matching that way, but some people aren't seeing that. So let me know if you're seeing odd mismatched different icons and things or glyphs for your different Apple care and warranty items, or if they match properly. 
Now also there's a new feature with Apple Watch Series 9 and Ultra 2. This was sent in by my friend Brom and this is actually something that you need your AirPods on for that he noticed and it could have been added with the last update. But basically what it is, is when you're using AirPods with Apple watch and you're working out, Siri will now ask you if you're finished working out. And if you say yes, the workout will end. So it's just kind of a nice part of the extra Siri features we have where it can record health, different data like that with the previous update. And now it seems to be actually asking you if your workout's complete. So that's great to see. And it's just a little extra feature, which we could see much more of with iOS 18. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, Apple has stopped signing a couple different updated versions. iOS 16.7.3 is no longer being signed by Apple. It means you can't downgrade to it as well as iOS 17.2, which is a bit of a surprise. We only have iOS 17.2.1 at this point and iOS 17.3 beta one. So if you're on either one of those versions, you want to downgrade or restore. The only thing you can use is iOS 17.2.1. We could get a future update in a little bit. We'll talk about that in a moment, but Apple also released a few different updates this week that they didn't withdraw. So they did withdraw that one update. I mentioned 17.3 beta two. They even have a special note about it in the feedback app where it says iOS and iPad OS 17.3 beta two has been withdrawn temporarily due to an issue that prevented a small number of devices from starting up. I would say it wasn't a small number. It was pretty significant. If your device is in this state, you can recover it by entering recovery mode and restoring a previous version of iOS or iPad OS. That's a bit of a pain, but that is one of the cautions Apple says about being a developer. They typically make sure those problems are fixed before they push it to the public beta. So they did withdraw that. However, they did release Mac OS 14.3 beta 2, watch OS 10.3 beta 2, TV OS and HomePod OS 17.3 beta 2, and a couple other Mac OS updates for older versions. So all of those are still available on Apple's website. They just withdrew that one update or two, really, if you count iPad OS. Now, as far as new features coming up, we're hearing more and more about Siri with AI or generative AI. We're not sure exactly what that will entail, but it does mean that Siri is going to get smarter with iOS 18 and probably have some significant updates that's coming in 2024, along with all the updates we've already mentioned with iOS 17.3, but it seems that's getting more and more attention and iOS 18 probably will be much larger as it seems iPhone 16 with le recent leaks of what it's supposed to look like is going to be a very minor update with maybe some camera improvements an updated chipset, maybe a larger screen and a different button on the side, a capture button. Other than that, it's going to look identical. It will have the same dynamic Island and everything else. So I don't think it's going to be a big hardware focus this year. We're going to get software focuses and hopefully that actually results in some stability. As far as iOS 17.3 beta two re-release it's tentative at this point, at this point, we haven't had a re-release and Apple typically pushes that back out with a public beta. They make sure everything's good to go and then it works properly. At this point, they may not actually push it out until next week. We could see some sort of odd weekend release, but that's pretty unlikely, but we could see that. And if we do, of course, I'll have a separate video about it. However, if not, we should have it sometime early next week, I would think. As far as the public release date, iOS 17.3 should release probably sometime toward the end of the month or early February. That will probably go along with the Apple vision pro launch. However, because we've had some issues and Apple stopped signing iOS 17.2, it wouldn't surprise me if we get an iOS 17.2.2. Maybe it will resolve some security issues, maybe some other issues we're having and much more. We never did get an update to watch OS 10.2.1 to resolve issues with maybe them stopping having to sell it, but maybe we'll see that very soon. Now, as far as the overall experience, there's more to talk about with iOS 17.2.1. There are some known issues with it, and it seems more and more websites are actually posting that there's issues with cellular data. Now, I personally have not experienced this, and I asked people on Twitter or X if they're having the issue as well. And you'll see here, it says seeing quite a few sites and reports of iOS 17.2.1 causing cellular connectivity issues, anyone having the issues. Most of you are not, or you're using the beta, only 30% are having issues. So it seems like it's a small subset of people having the issue, at least based off of that, but some people are having it and it seems to be more overseas, different websites that are reporting it, such as India times. There's another one in China and other places as well. So it seems like it's not necessarily in the U S again, I haven't had any issues with it. 
Now, as far as other issues, Wi-Fi seems to be fixed in 17.2.1 for the majority of people. However, if you're still having that issue, I'll mention this again, you may want to reset your network settings. However, this will wipe out the passwords for your network typically, not always, but sometimes it will. And if we go to transfer or reset iPhone, then we go to reset under reset. We have reset network settings. If you're having network settings with Wi-Fi, this sometimes fixes that issue. Also, one other person noticed that Wi-Fi 6E was the issue they were having once they disabled that in their Wi-Fi settings. So whether or not they actually disabled it on their router, I'm not sure, but they said if they noticed once it was disabled, their Wi-Fi seemed to work properly. So there could be some bugs there. It does seem that that brightness bug has returned. It has for me. Sometimes when you adjust it, it stutters or jumps all over the place, which is a little odd. Of course, we have a volume bug for some where it automatically adjusts the volume. The MagSafe battery pack sometimes takes two times to actually charge. And then, of course, we have that bug that seems to never go away where we have that notification bug where it sort of just jumps into place and isn't working properly. So that's something they need to fix, as well as the wallpaper bug. So you'll see my wallpaper is nice and vibrant. Swipe home. It dims. Some people have suggested this is part of the animation, but this is actually a bug on other versions. It doesn't do this. So you swipe home, then you can see the background dim or desaturate. Some others have said there's keyboard lag and I've had issues with dictation and autocorrect, which have been awful lately. So lots of little bugs here and there with 17.2.1, nothing that means you can't use the device except the Wi-Fi or maybe cellular issues, but everything else is just more of an annoyance than anything else. It also fixed the battery for most. And if people are still having issues with the battery, I would highly suggest just doing a restart or a hard restart where you do volume up, volume down, press and hold the power sleep wake button, keep holding until it reboots. And if that doesn't fix it, most of the time it seems to fix it for people having that issue. When it comes to iOS 17.3 beta two, it seems to be mostly pretty good for those that have actually managed to install it without a problem and didn't have to restore their device. Airdrop seems to be working better, but the notification and wallpaper dimming bug is still there. So those bugs still there, but everything else seems to be working properly. No issues whatsoever, or at least I've experienced no issues whatsoever with this beta. So I didn't have a problem installing it on the 15 pro max or iPad, but it seems some people that did have an issue installing it had back tap enabled. However, some people had back tap enabled and it worked properly. However, those that updated to it disabled that first, it seemed to fix the issue. My uncle actually had the issue where it completely bricked his and went into a boot loop with a 15 pro. He had to wipe it and reinstall using a Mac. So definitely a buggy update. Hopefully they re-release it very soon. As far as camera improvements, well, I've talked before where Apple improved zoom on the 15 pro and pro max recently. So the autofocus there is much better. You'll see everything just focuses nice and quick, no issues whatsoever there. However, the overall camera I think is just good in general with the 15 series phones. Here's a few different photos to see what it looks like. I don't think you're going to notice a difference between the latest beta and the public release, but let me know what you think in the comments below. As far as the release notes, well, the only thing we had with release notes really, like I mentioned before, was this withdrawal of that update. And then they pulled the release notes before there was just one bug fix mentioned in here. So it wasn't much to go by. So maybe we'll get some additional updates in the future as far as release notes go. As far as performance and heat performance is quite good. I haven't noticed an issue on either version. In fact, both have been nice and fast promotion is super smooth. Just going between both promotion is smooth scrolling and everything else. There's really no difference there whatsoever. As far as loading different apps, you'll see everything seems to load fine, go into library, go into playlists. It loads about the same going into different applications. They load like you would expect. As far as overall heat, both devices are nice and cool to the touch. I've had no issues with that whatsoever. The only people I've heard from that have had issues with heat on the latest updates tend to have battery issues as well. So there's definitely something going on there using the power. Let's take a look though with the thermal camera on iOS 17.2.1. We have about 84 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit on 17.3 beta two. It's even cooler around 83 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit on 17.2.1. We're around 30 to 31 degrees Celsius and on 17.3 beta two around 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. So it's staying nice and cool for both of them. No real issues there. Just having them on standby seems to be fine. It's not really draining a ton of battery 
But first, let's take a look at Geekbench as I did run it on both devices. So if we go into Geekbench here on the right with 17.2.1, we have 2,943 for single core compared to 2,931 on 17.3 beta two for multi-core. We have 7,325 compared to 7,054. It's a little bit higher on the public release, which is great. Not too much that it would make a significant difference, but it's great to see they're both doing well and they were both let to cool down before running it. No other processes were running or anything else. So in general, they're quite good and they barely got warm even after running the Geekbench scores, which is a little bit different. So they're staying nice and cool. Like I said before. As far as battery life, let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll go into settings, general, and then about to take a look at the overall cycle count. Cycle count on the left phone is 77. On the right, it's 20 for 17.2.1 compared to 17.3 beta 2. So I've been using the public version for a little bit now. Let's go ahead and take a look at battery. And then again, here's coconut battery on the left. So you can take a look at that and both are at 100. Some people are seeing their phones go down to 99 at this point. It's not unusual after 25 cycles sometimes for that to happen. It just depends on what the actual capacity is, as it can vary a little bit when you pick up a new phone as it's chemical. And some of those batteries can vary slightly as far as the overall milliamp hours. Now, as far as battery life itself, I have not used the beta full time, but I have had it on for a little bit. It seems to be okay from what I'm reading in the comments. Like I said, I haven't used it full time. However, over the last 10 days, I've been using 17.2.1 and yesterday I did not have great battery life. I had four hours and 35 minutes of screen active time, two hours and 19 minutes of screen idle time. However, the day before two hours and 39 minutes, it varies greatly on this phone, which is a little bit odd. So you'll see today though, I've had three hours and 29 minutes with two hours and one minutes of screen idle time. And I'm only down to 77%. So it's actually doing quite well today. Sometimes it does great. Sometimes it doesn't. I haven't really changed my habits with this at all, but for some reason it varies greatly. As far as what you had to say, let's take a look at some of your comments. David Platt 284 said, hi Aaron, I'm currently using iOS 17.2.1 on my iPhone 15 pro. I have very few, if any bugs and battery life and performance are average, but not great. The journal app is a great addition. I love it. Keith Siggy 3179 said, I'm currently using iOS 17.2.1 on my iPhone 11 with a battery capacity of 88%. So far, this update can run smoothly. No issues at all. The battery life is good. Dr. Scott 333 said 13 pro at 89% battery health and 17.2.1 has been great so far. Still getting all day battery life with 25% left at the end of the day. No problem. Only performance issue I've noticed is with YouTube background play stuttering just a bit when I turn the screen on or off. I did notice an improvement with cell data reception where I live. With 17.1, I would always lose reception when streaming music or YouTube at certain spots in my city, and I no longer experience these drops. Tim Chisona says, running iOS 17.3 beta 2 on iPhone 15 Pro Max. Installed flawlessly with no known bugs. Battery seems great so far. Shane 94 Shane said, I was using iOS 17.3 beta 1, and now I'm currently using iOS 17.3 beta 2 on my iPhone 15 Pro Max. So far, no problem. Everything is going smoothly, especially the battery life, which has has significantly improved and is very enjoyable. So that's everything with iOS 17.2.1 and iOS 17.3 beta two. Hopefully we get that re-release very soon and let me know how it's going for you. If you were able to actually install it yourself as well. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.